All right, welcome back to one of day 20 uh, from Math 335 uh, with example one. Uh, and actually the only example for, for this one a day. Um, so for part A, uh, we we're given a basis set, which is given as uh, 2, 1, 3, 1, 0, 1, and negative 1, 1. Uh, and we're given that it's a basis for R3, which means that these are linearly independent and uh, also span R3. We want to compute the coordinate vector. Uh, so we want the CV coordinate vector of uh, V, which was given to us as 2, negative 1, and 1. Uh, so we're going to do it two ways, using re reduced row echelon form and then using uh, the change of basis theorem. Okay, all right. So uh, let's go ahead and set the problem up, and then we'll jump into using some technology. So we have uh, a vector V that has a B1 x1 plus x2 b2 plus x3 b3. So this is our situation. So we're looking for the coordinates x, uh, x1, x2, and x3. Uh, so this is x, x1, x2, and x3. So we're looking for these values uh, in this, uh, with these column vectors. And so this is b1, this is b2, and this is b3. And so uh, we have x1, 2, 1, 3 times uh, or plus x2 times 1, 0, 1 plus x3 times negative 1, 1, 1. Okay. Uh, and so in our vector v here is given to us as 2, negative 1, 1. Okay. All right. So uh, the first the first route is uh, asking us to find it using reduced scroll echelon form. So we notice that. Uh, we can form a matrix here. So this can be written as a coordinate matrix or a uh, coefficient matrix times our vector x1, x2, x3. Uh, so we can simplify this as 2, 1, 3, 1, 0, 1, and negative 1, 1. We're going to multiply that by x1, x2, and x3. And we know that that's equal to 2, negative 1, and 1. OK? Uh, and so if I construct the augmented matrix with our coefficient matrix here, uh, and then do reduced row echelon form. Um, that's one way that we're going to get it. Uh, since we are given that this is the matrix is, uh, call it, uh, I'll just say A inverse for now, uh, exists, since uh, A, uh, let's see, columns of A are, uh, linearly independent, then there exists an A inverse. And so the second route will be to multiply uh, A inverse uh, times B uh, to find the coordinate axis X, okay? Or the coordinate vector X. So <clears throat> the first one is augmented matrix. The second one is um, using the, uh, the fact that this basis set is, form, creates a an invertible matrix um, that then is uh, invertible. Another way of saying that is that the image of this transformation um, uh, spans R3. In other words, the rank of uh, equals N. Or another way of saying that is that the null space is the zero vector. So tying it back to previous um, one a day 19, uh, some, some similarities. Different ways of saying the same thing. So uh, all of these kind of things are starting to come together and, and play, play nicely here. So um, let's go ahead and jump over to some technology here and uh, calculate these things. Uh, so we're going to jump back into Maxima. And that will give us uh, a quick result. So we have, um, so we're going to define a matrix A. Uh, let's see, and we have that it's going to be 2, 1, negative 1. Second row is 1, 0, 1. And finally, uh, 3, 1, 1. Okay. All right. You can check the null space just to verify that that is the case. Oh, uh, we'll need to make the vector. Um, 
Model plot V, that's what it is, matrix. Uh, two, negative one, and one. Okay, there's my matrix, uh, my V and my A. Okay, so now uh, the first way uh, was to do, so I'll make a note here. Uh, let's see, I always forget. First way is reduce row exponent form. Um, for us, we're going to make that the, we can only do the echelon form, but we can see then that, oh, I need to make the augmented matrix first. So uh, I'm going to add call. I'm going to have A and B. I'm going to add those two matrices together. So I'm going to define that as a new matrix B. Uh, let's call it C. Um, and then, uh, then I'll do echelon form on C. Okay, so that's going to check the first way. And then uh, let's do the second way, which was to invert A. So let's invert A. So make a note here. Uh, second way is invert A and multiply. Okay. Uh, so we're going to invert A and multiply that by V. And that'll give us then the second one. So let's go ahead and enter and see what to get. Uh, so notice that here, this is the nullity, right? This is the span um, of the, uh, that's what I'm looking for, the span of the null space. The null space is uh, basically just the zero vector, right? So that's what that's saying. So that, that confirms everything that we thought about earlier. Uh, here's A, here's B. This is the augmented matrix C, and this is the reduced row echelon form of C. Um, and then this is the A inverse. So these should these this column here are the answers, right? This doesn't quite look like it, but let's take this back to technology and, and I'll show you. Because again, this is not the row reduced echelon form. Fortunately, uh, it only maxima only does the echelon form. So just a little bit of work. Uh, but most of the work is already done for us, so it'll be it'll be really straightforward. So um, the <clears throat> uh, echelon form gave us that it was uh, let's see one zero one and negative one zero one negative three and four and zero zero one zero. Okay, so this is the augmented matrix. Um, so what this is saying is that x3 is equal to 0. That's what that one's saying. So substituting back in, that tells me that uh, x2 minus 3x3 is equal to 4. But this is 0, so that means that x2 is equal to 4. That is looking really promising. And here, this is saying that x1 plus x3 is equal to negative 1. But again, that's 0, so that means that x1 is equal to negative 1. So this, uh, re the reduced rational form, is in fact saying that 1, 0 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1 is equal to negative 1, 4, and 0. Uh, so this is the this is the coordinate, this is the coordinate vector uh, using the first way, the reduced rational form. And then uh, the, as I saw, uh, A inverse V gave us the exact same thing, negative 1, 4, 0, uh, more directly. So uh, both methods uh, give us exactly what we were expecting. Uh, this is the change of basis method, uh, and this is the reduced rational form method. Okay, uh, let's jump to part B and see how that's playing out. Okay, so part B says um, we have a transformation from R3 to R3 uh, given by T of X, Y, and Z such that uh, we have x plus y, z, and 2x minus y. Okay, uh, And this one asks us to find the coordinate vector of t of 2, negative 1, 1, with respect to uh, the basis b uh, in part a. OK, so in other words, um, going back up here to this basis. So. Um, uh, so, uh, first thing would be to see, okay, um, 
so we're going to see how does it transform this this vector and then uh and then write it with respect to the um the new the new basis okay so find the coordinate vector with respect to the new basis so um okay so let's write this matrix um uh, so call this uh one one zero 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 one and two negative one zero okay uh so this is the this is the matrix um and it's going to operate on the vector two negative one one okay so when i operate this will be the transformation of this part right here is just the, tra the transformation of it and then we want to take this transformed vector and we want to write a coordinate vector so this is going to equal this matrix product is going to equal uh, x1 times b1 plus x2 times b2 plus uh, x3 times b3 okay so that's what we're doing uh, so to find x1 x2 and x3 again uh, we're going to get a, a matrix of b1 b2 and b3 times the vector x and so what i would do we already know this is invertible so let's call this uh we called it a last time let's call it p this time um because we usually reserve i guess i should have done that better sorry about that this is this is the matrix a here so uh we'll call that p uh and what we're going to do then is we're going to take uh we're going to multiply both sides by p inverse here p inverse and that should then give us the coordinate of uh, coordinate this should be the the cv that we're looking for okay so let's jump over to geodebra not geodebra uh, sorry uh, let's jump over to maxima and uh, compute that and see if that in fact is what we're expecting okay all right so uh good thing is is that we already have that matrix input it so we don't need to um I did call that a didn't I good um why not so I'm going to come back up here and call this p now um actually what I'm going to do I'm going to take take these two things and take it down here um I'm going to if you type in kill all um Uh, what that does is it like it like resets it. So uh, okay, so this is going to be um, my matrix P, and that's V. That's still P. Okay, uh, and so I need to make the matrix A, matrix A, which is going to be uh, one, one, zero, uh, zero, zero, one, and uh, two, negative one, zero. Okay. All right, so we're going to have uh, invert uh, P, and then we're going to multiply that by A, and that's going to act on the vector V. Okay. Uh, so if we compute all that correctly, then we get that the coordinate, uh, so the CV, the, the uh, chain, the coordinate vector in the, the new basis set is going to be, uh, let's see, negative 2, 8, and three with respect to the new basis. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. so let me, and that's what we should expect. So let me go jump back real quick to the okay, camera just so you can see what I wrote because I realized you weren't looking at that. Uh, so we calculated that what we just saw in uh, in maxima was that the coordinate vector is negative two, eight, and three. That's what we were looking for. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that was everything for for that problem. And then let's see, we had I think there was one more part on on the uh, all right for part C, uh, we wanted to uh, prove. 
uh, the change of basis uh, theorem, prove the change of basis theorem. Uh, so uh, in that theorem, we had, we're given that T is a map from Rn to Rn. Uh, the linear transformation associated with a matrix A. And we wanted to let uh, P inverse be the change of matrix, change of basis matrix, uh, change of basis matrix. Uh, and then we wanted to show that P inverse A P is the matrix that represents, uh, which represents P with respect to uh, the basis B. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and go ahead and prove that. All right. So what are we trying to do? All right. So well, first of all, let's consider uh, four. Uh, any vector uh, v uh, that's in that's an element of R n. Uh, we know that uh, P inverse v, since P inverse is the change of basis matrix, uh, is the coordinate vector um, of the same point. With respect, with respect to basis uh, B. In other words, uh, if I have a vector V um, and we have X1, B1, plus X2, B2, plus dot, 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 plus Xn, B to the N, okay? Then uh, these are the, where uh, Bi is an element of the basis at B, okay? Um, <clears throat> Then these form the column uh, matrix uh, that we would call. Uh, so then this can be written as P uh, times the change of. This is the change of. Uh, <laughs> change of variables. <laughs> Sorry, this is the coordinate vector uh, V or X. And so multiplying both sides by P inverse here. Okay, is what we're saying. Okay, so this is the identity. And so the change of uh, change of um, oh my gosh, change of basis matrix. Uh, so X here is written uh, in terms of the new coordinate basis B, uh, and B is written with respect to the standard basis, okay, or the previous basis. Okay, uh, so then then we have uh, P inverse AP uh, uh, may operate on any such vector. Okay, so uh, what does that mean? Then we have P inverse AP, and we're multiplying that by P inverse V. And that's equal to uh, P inverse A times P, P inverse times V, which is equal to P inverse A, B. But that is quite literally uh, P inverse times the transformation of the vector V. A, B is the transformation of the vector V. Okay. In other words, uh, this is which 
is the coordinate coordinate <clears throat> vector of uh, T V with respect to the basis B. Okay. All right. I hope that was helpful. Uh, that was the last of the questions, I believe. Uh, anyway, a lot of fun, and uh, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.